Hi there, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. We're so glad to have you. The name of the program is Home Keepers, and we try to deal with anything and everything that affects the home. And if you think about it a little bit, that usually is anything and everything. And so we try to bring those issues to you with some of the best people that you'll ever be able to hear and learn from. So welcome. Uh, a lot of you who are watching us, you, you know exactly what we're about. And it's from you that I hear constantly. Thank you for the wonderful guests that cover such a wide variety of subjects. And all I can say is I can't take any credit for it because the Lord sends them. Uh, this program doesn't have money, you know, to fly people in and all that it takes to do that, all the expense, but God sends them. And I'm so thankful because I know they minister to you as well. A lot of very different areas of your life. Uh, today we have a wonderful, wonderful guest. Uh, I've got things through email uh, from him and about him for a long time, and I'm so glad to finally meet him, Dr. Alex McFarland. And he is uh, author and speaker. Um, I, think I, I think I read that he's written about 18 books. And he's well-versed on the millennials. Now, that, that's, that's a generation. That's a, that's a group. And uh, every, every generation has its own specific ideas and needs. And sometimes they throw away the older ideas and have ideas of their own. And it uh, makes life pretty interesting. Uh, he's the host of Exploring the Word uh, on American Family Radio. And after you meet him, you'll see uh, really what a wonderful ministry he has. So I'm anxious for you to meet him. And I'm anxious to join Stephanie in the kitchen because we're going to fix a real simple chicken, baked chicken dish that you can throw together in no time and have it on the table. Um, before I do, though, let me remind you we are viewer supported and every show is viewer supported it might be through buying a product or something like that but most of our support comes from the viewer himself and uh, they people will send a check or something or they'll do it by credit card and there's no amount too small no amount too large I just want you to know that we thank you and thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you do. So information on your screen for an address. If you like me and you still sell mail checks, you know, or uh, if you use a credit card like Stephanie does, why uh, that information's on your screen as well. And I just want to again say thank you, thank you, thank you. When I go through the mail, I'm deeply touched by your kindness, your sweet words, and your donations. Pray God blesses you over and over for all of that. And I've joined Stephanie over here. Um, I must confess, I tasted the chicken. <laughs> oh, okay. I tasted the chicken. And? Oh, my. Are you going to taste it again so we can have a realistic mm -hmm. television show? Yes, so I could show. do a, you yeah. know, show my acting ability. Yes, yes. Well, it calls for the chicken breasts, but I thought that these smaller ones, the I, sometimes ones. they call them tenderloins, mm -hmm. but they it's chicken breasts, but it's cut up small. I prefer that. Mm -hmm. do you, if you notice how big the chicken breasts They're are. They're huge. Nowadays? I usually cut them in half and then and pound them down. And Is that because they give them so many hormones? I, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to go there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> you're going to spray the pan for me. We have ten, chicken tenderloins. We have a half a cup of butter. We're going to put this in a little pan here because we're going to dip the chicken in this dish and then we're going to dip it in this dish. A tablespoon of Worcestershire. Ooh, that's a teaspoon of ground give mustard. It a good, good flavor. Half a teaspoon of garlic salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. That's my first little dipping. That's a That's your first dipping. Yes. So we're gonna mix this all up, and then this is just the French fried onions, all cr um, crushed up. I I love those things. I, I just too. can't buy them because I'll eat the whole. I'll eat the whole thing. Really? Pack. Yes. That's so fun. Just like out of the thing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, a, you know, like a potato chip. That is so funny. Oh, they're delicious. Okay. So there you go. Yep. That's all you get. Mm. Okay. So all you do. So this is like just taking a simple dish and taking chicken and just mm -hmm. taking it up a notch. A little bit more flavor. Mm -hmm. Just dip. 
Yeah, because you saw what went in there. Right. Butter, Worcestershire sauce, um, dry m ground mustard, garlic, salt, and pepper. Mm -hmm. So a little dip in here. Perfect. You sprayed the pan. Mm -hmm. A little dip in here. Mm -hmm. Like, how unbelievably simple, mm -hmm. really. And then you bake it. And, uh, you know, of course, it's a, if you use the chicken breasts, it's going to be, be a it's little take bit longer. longer. Yeah. Chicken, these chicken tenders don't take any time at all. Mm -mm. The breast takes probably 30, 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. These prob if, if these took 15 minutes. But make sure your chicken's done. Oh, you don't want to get sick. Oh, you went to the, the nook and cranny place recently, I didn't did, you? I did, twice. I said, okay, I need a 12-step. That's got to be it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's but so much fun. It's interesting. Uh, do you think it's a new demand for this nowadays? Because I do. Yeah, People and it's therapy for me. Yeah. It's very, it's so therapeutic for me. It's just yeah. sitting there and painting, and I don't really have to think. Except once you pick your colors, then it's just like, mm -hmm. it's. I leave there so happy. Do it's you know just, what I do at night if I'm watching TV? I do crossword puzzles and a lot of Bible game Keep things. your brain going. That's what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So then we have a little bit of the extra, mm -hmm. and you just um, sprinkle them over the top after you, after you do them all. And this and is what they look them. like when yeah. they're finished, but like flavor, you just have flavor to. town. But there's a little, little tiny piece. I okay, here I'll try yeah. this one. Uh. And you tell us how it is, Miss Rippy. I I cheated. I, I know you did. Mm. Mm hmm. Just flavor uh -huh. upped a little bit. Mm. Yep, that's good. There's your, mm -hmm. there's your entree. Mm hmm. And all these. Good flavors go into it. And then whatever you want with it, you know, a salad, maybe a starch, and you got it. Baked potato would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What Delicious. is it called again? It is called crispy onion chicken. Yes. Crispy and uh, it's You really very, taste that Worcestershire. Yeah, very flavorful because, let's face it, especially chicken breasts have no flavor. You got to do They're something. They're like a canvas mm -hmm. that you must paint. Mm -hmm. So the information for this is coming up on your screen. And um, email is the qu it's the quickest way and all. But if you do write to us, be sure and send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope. But that's all coming up. And then if you haven't met him, he has been on the program before. If you haven't, you're going to really like Dr. Alex McFarland. Promise you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Okay, Alex, last time you were here, we talked about this book, mm -hmm. Abandoned Faith, and it deals with the uh, millennials, and they're kind of a complex group, don't you think? A little bit. Um, yeah. It is 80 million strong. By 2020, millennials will be the largest segment of the American workforce. And the largest percentage of them came from broken homes. They did. Oh, yes. Yeah. Six out of ten. And in, in some parts of the country, more like eight out of ten. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a generation. They're wonderful. Let me say this good about millennials. They've, they have a real heart to serve other people. Um, when I was a youth pastor more than 20 years ago, uh, getting a crowd to go to the amusement park was not hard to do. Getting a crowd to go to a, a mission trip was a little bit of a tough sell. A couple of years ago, we took a huge group to, well, we've taken uh, youth to Zambia, mm -hmm. to the Sudan, to Peru, mm -hmm. and millennials are willing to get their hands dirty to serve others. That's great. Yeah, I've, I've, I've noticed that in, in the uh, material that I've pulled together for this, um, they don't care about the big church buildings that my generation built, uh, and they they really do want to serve. They want to reach out. Uh, but I also got this. Um, somebody calls them the lost generations. Mm -hmm. uh, that no one listens. Uh, they're sick of values and mission statements. Well, I don't think that's such a bad idea. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a priority to help the poor, mm -hmm. which is very much so. Mm -hmm. um, they distrust over money in religious organizations. Feel mm -hmm. that should be tracked. They say mentors don't preach at us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That good preaching is not that important, but you're won by the foolishness of preaching, the Bible says. Exactly, exactly. And so we've got to remember in our church, 
we shouldn't just conform no, to the culture. We, we, um, the gospel always uh, must include the Word of God. Yeah. The good news of Jesus Christ is God designed it that there would be the church. We would proclaim His Word, not just our Word. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kids, they are spiritually hungry. They do respond. But our, our church, um, our Sunday school, our Bible teaching, our sermons, it can't just be good motivational speaking. Yeah. It has to be the Word of God. Yeah, how about the blood and the cross? And, and repentance from sin. Okay, they want to feel valued. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we desperately need the church to tell us we are enough. No conditions, no expect, expectations. Come on. Yeah. That's, that's a little silly. Yeah. Uh, want us to talk about controversial issues. Mm -hmm. I think we need to talk about what saith the Lord. Amen. And that'll probably deal with that. Um, and let's say they want, to, um, want us to stop talking about them and the church is your move. Now, here's a, we're going to get into your other books. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is what Bill Gates spoke <laughs> at a, at a graduation. Sure. This is what millennials and all of us need to hear. Yeah. Life's not fair. Get used to it. Okay? Right. right on. Number two, the world does not care about your self-esteem. That's true. I've never found self-esteem in the Bible anyway, but. It, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's not beneath you to flip burgers. Okay? Exactly. These are just a few. If you mess up, it's not your parents' fault. That's right. Mm -hmm. And in life, there are still winners and losers. It, it, exactly. Do you know Calvin Coolidge, there's a very famous quote where Calvin Coolidge, former president, uh, said, nothing can take the place of persistence. Do you remember that quote? He said, intelligence can't. Uh, yes. And he <clears throat> said, uh, persistence is <clears throat> the, the divine <clears throat> secret to success. And it is. Do you know, um, and I want to say this, I give God the glory. I give God the glory. But uh, 22 years ago, when I finished seminary, uh, I've got a wonderful w wife, very godly wife. My wife and I had $58 in the world and the shirt on our back. I mean, literally. Mm -hmm. I, I can get on my soapbox a little bit because I know what it is to have nothing. I came from a farming family in rural North Carolina. Mm -hmm. My parents were bankrupt. In fact, um, I found myself as a newlywed having to... And, and I'm, I was a newlywed. I was a youth pastor. Youth pastors don't make a lot of money. Their salary is not. No. Six figures. Yeah, like the first 10 years mm -hmm. of the time I was in ministry, I was making $18,000 a year mm -hmm. and giving about three fifty dollars a month to my parents to help them. I know what it is mm -hmm. to have nothing but the shirt on your back. I really honestly do. Mm -hmm. And here we are uh, 22 years later. God's allowed me to preach in 50 states uh, five continents. You can tell I haven't wow. missed any meals. Uh, I, I give God the glory. Now, I will tell you, my wife and I, when we started our ministry, the first really about five years, uh, we would go through the sofa cushions to get up uh, $2.99 <laughs> to go out and get uh, split a fast food hamburger. Yeah. Honest engine. I mean, we really did. I remember one time, my wife and I, I mean, we were broke we were eating mustard sandwiches and drinking water out of the spigot. Honestly. That's bad. Yeah, but God is faithful. And, and what we learned through the, I would say this, the hard times are good for us, aren't they? Oh, like nothing else. Nothing will take the place of that. And, and a lot of millennials, moms and dads mean well, but they're doing a disservice. Mm -hmm. What they consider a starter car is what you and I would have probably thought was the dream car. The car, yeah. Yeah. And mom and dad, um, don't do something counterproductive. Don't let your kids mm -hmm. grow up in this world thinking that it's always about me. Mm -hmm. I've got to have the best from day one. No, it's because working hard, knowing what deferred gratification is, it builds our character. No and, question And about much it. of life, and certainly the life of a Christian, mm -hmm. is the ability to say no to yourself. Mm -hmm. The, the, you know, the reason I contacted you was um, I get these emails and they, they, would, they would grab me. Um, and uh, so we want to talk about your new book, which is so new, I don't even have a copy. But it's called Stand Strong in Your Faith. And you, you wrote it with... Um, Jason Jimenez. 
a, a friend. Sometimes we speak around the country. Yeah. Jason is a, a wonderful guy, originally from Arizona, and a youth pastor and pastor and, like myself, passionate about passing the faith to the next generation. Yeah, and uh, that's what I appreciate about your ministry. It's so sound theologically and biblically, and you're trying to get it to the to the young people, um, and that's the only thing that will change them. Now, it's as you, uh, and like I say, we don't even have a copy of it. It's brand new, but it's called Stand Strong in Your Faith, Live What You Believe with Confidence and Passion. Uh, now, the purpose of the book um, is part of the problem dealing uh, with this group, uh, political correctness, that almost put it with the Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, and even sometimes the church in the quest to never offend anybody uh -huh. is a little bit PC. We've got to be focused on biblical correctness. And sometimes it offends. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, Jesus understood that the cross is an offense to some people. Right. And we need to make sure that we don't offend the Lord. Because mm -hmm. do you know what? I want to say this. Political correctness is a subtle form of idolatry. Because think about um, the person who's got a, a worldview very different from Christianity, and we don't want to offend them. Right. Look, they didn't hang on a cross for us. Jesus did. And we need to care more about Jesus' opinion rather than placating a perpetually offended world that's in the dark. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you really do hit the, in my estimation, the um, hot button topics. Um, you say that the uh, public school system, colleges and universities are not, not really helping us all. Of course, they, they promote the gay agenda They're real really big. Good. And that if you don't support gay marriage, then um, you're not loving. Well, let me say this. There, there's a word that has really been imposed on the culture in the last 20 years, and the word is egalitarianism. Mm -hmm. Egalitarianism is from a Latin word that means equal. And in the world of the 21st century, um, and I guarantee, guarantee, like I say, unless you send your child to a Christian school and a Christian university, they will be indoctrinated into an egalitarian worldview. Egalitarian means equal. Everything's got to be the same. You can't say that Jesus is the only way because what about all these other people that are sincere about what they believe? You can't say males and females are different. By the way, science tells us males and females are different. Yeah. There are 6,500 enzymes and genes different about a male body than a female body. But in, in and look, I, I love education, but I, you speak in 200 universities, you see and hear some things. Um, if you say men and women are different, that... The chromosomes? Oh, yeah, X, Y, you know. I think about Bruce Jenner, who has become Caitlyn Jenner uh, in the minds of a lot of people. But if they exhumed his body in 200 years, he would still be shown to have XY chromosomes. But clearly, in the biblical worldview, men and women are equal in their worth before God, equal in personhood, equal in being made in the image of God. But we are... That's it. <laughs> we're <It's> still different. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're different in our physiology and mm -hmm. in, our, in our callings. But in so much of education... Um, religion must be equal. Male and female yeah. must be equal. There's even economic and social egalitarianism forced on us. Right. That um, the government must step in and forcibly redirect business and uh, the home life. Mm -hmm. And we have got to get back to a, a, an America of personal responsibility before God, mm -hmm. the Ten Commandments. Uh, honesty, character, accountability. And uh, we've got a, a um, generation, which we call the millennials, who are moving farther and farther away from that. Yeah. I've, I have grieved in my heart, I have great grandchildren and great grandchildren, that they'll never know the America I grew up in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, they're growing up in Sodom. Yeah. Uh, sister, I knew I liked you the first time I met you, and I appreciate your, your transparency, and you're right. We are in an America that is deep in sin. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say something that might sound a little bit old-fashioned, but um, our downfall really began 
in the late 60s, early 70s with two cultural juggernauts that I think are going to be our undoing if we don't get on What are those? Number one is abortion. Number yeah. two is the breakdown of the family. Yeah. Uh, 1970, New York State, California, no-fault divorce. Mm -hmm. You can walk away for any reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then 1973, um, we legalized and government subsidized abortion. And here's, here's the thing. God loves us. Yes, God is merciful. But um, from 1973 to now, the number of humans that we have killed uh, in the aftermath of Roe v. Wade would be Adolf Hitler times about 15. Yeah. I have to believe God cares about that. Well, I do too. And, um, you know, we sing and we pray, and I do too. You know, God bless America. But there are things that are going to prevent that blessing. we got to be blessable. I think something switched in heaven when the Supreme Court okayed gay marriage. Oh, yeah. Be because... Um, Marriage was instituted in Genesis, yeah. and God made the woman for the man. They're, they're completely different. Yeah. And uh, then you put abortion on top of that, and the church has a Herculean job. However, greater is he who's in us than yeah. he who's in the world. That's true. And uh, the, the church needs to get, just needs to get with it. Uh, I'm going over some points that I read about your book, Standing Strong in Your Christian Faith. Um, your studies have discovered unfortunate truths that more than 80% of Christians, both young and old, are biblically illiterate. Yeah. Uh, that's, oh, that's awful. Uh, I, I know. We, we give a, a nod to the Bible, but we're not reading the Bible as much as we should. Mm -hmm. um, part of the disciples' job is to know the Word of God. And when we've got, you know, clearly the, the Word of God says there's no Savior but Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I could list innumerable verses, but Acts 4, verse 12, there's no other name under heaven given among mm -hmm. men whereby we must be saved. Only Jesus. Jesus said, Luke 13, 3, if you don't repent, you will perish. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, so we've got to turn to Jesus. Not politically correct. <laughs> right. But I, we've, um, in the last, let's say, two years, been easily in front of a quarter million people in, I mean, audiences face to face, and we do surveys. Um, if someone of a non-Christian religion is sincere about what they believe, will they still go to heaven? Generally, about 60% will say yes. And these are professed Christians. Um, could Jesus have sinned while he was here on earth? Or did Jesus sin? Some of them think that. Yeah, oftentimes they'll say yes. And we'll, we'll say, you know, questions like this. Um, does the Bible contain the Word of God or is the Bible the Word of God? And many times they'll say um, it contains. We need to understand it is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, one interesting thing that I think is kind of interesting, uh, the subject of hell, at least in our surveys, which we've been conducting for about 17 years, and, oh, I don't know, three, probably half a million teens we've surveyed, um, they are more likely to believe in hell than their parents. Why? Interesting. Well, it, and if you say, well, gee, there's some inconsistencies here, you're right. The, the mind of the millennials, unless they're really solidly Christian and biblically literate, they're going to be kind of inconsistent. I'll tell you another one in a moment. But um, millennials and younger generally are more likely to believe in hell than their parents that are 40 and north of 40. It's, it's, it's interesting. All right, here's another stat, and I want your your response to this. Freedom of speech. 93% of millennials say they believe in free speech. Yay, that's good. Yeah. But roughly 40% would say um, that hate speech yeah. should be censored. So they'll say freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the freedom to say there's no Savior but Jesus? Yeah. That can amount to bullying and should be censored, mm -hmm. says about 43% out of 10. Boy, you... You've set your, we're almost out of time here. I can't believe how fast it goes when you're here. Right. Uh, you got a Herculean job, <laughs> that's all well, I can say. Well, we serve a risen, you powerful do. Savior. And the name of the book we have been talking about is Standing Strong in Your Christian Faith. And Alex uh, McFarland here, and uh, thanks for being with me last time. And please know you're welcome here. This is such, such an important message, and it's really, really big in my heart. Uh, you stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye.
Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. And I do want to thank you for your support, my friends. Uh, appreciate it so very, very much. And I know that God blesses you you know, when you have a heart to give. I, I'm a giver myself, and I know, I know how well it works. I was thinking, uh, Dr. McFarlane was here about even you could go through the scripture and see how one generation from the next changes, and yet, in a way, those generations don't change at all. Sometimes a generation will try to throw out everything that the previous generation did and believed in and what was important to them. But aren't you thankful for a foundational truth that never, ever changes? God doesn't change. His word doesn't change. His message to us does not change. What he expects from us is to, does not change. He is always forgiving. He is always loving. Those things are absolutely changeless. So when you see these things, you know, where the generations change a little bit and they want to throw out what my generation did and so forth, let's make sure that we always emphasize the things that do not change. I, I'm thankful for, you know, growing up in a Christian home and lots of church and all and, and the songs we sang and one of them comes to mind right now, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand, and that is true for every generation from Adam until this very day. Those are the things that must be taught and retaught and respected and lived. Hey, join me next time. Remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.